Hello ladies and gentlemen, Insane Gorilla here and welcome back to my channel. This is going to be a 300 special because we recently reached that and I'm, well, 100% grateful. I never thought I'd reach this number. Honestly, you guys have made my year so far. But, Happy New Year to all of you. This is a 300 special. Now, for everybody who knows Final Fantasy, you know who these two characters are. But this is a what if Asta was the reincarnation of Sephiroth. And here's a bit of explaining to do. Okay, so we all know Sephiroth from the Final Fantasy universe. Cloud kicks his ass. Two times. But there's a lot, many more times that Sephiroth turns up. And I'm going to the part where Zack became a soldier. And where Sephiroth turned his back on everyone. A part of Sephiroth that was not corrupted by his delusions of grandeur after realising that he's from Genova, though his mother's actually an alien called Genova, aka Genova Cells, yada yada yada. I'm not going through the whole law bit because there's a lot to try and cover. So yeah. When Sephiroth became evil, which I think is a totally good look for him, because the good guy never really, f never really fitted in. So yeah, when, as I said, Sephiroth went completely off, the, completely off the rails and into the deep end, he had a split in personalities from a good side that wants to do good and protect people to the bad side that just wants to see the whole world burn and him as a new god this is where he cast that bit off that was completely useless to him aka the good side of him and it scattered itself into memory shards and somehow they made it to the Clover universe the Black Clover universe and so the first part of Sephiroth's memories placed itself inside of a young boy changing his hair from a dark grey into a well, from a lightish grey into a very darkish grey like Sephiroth and his hair grew out a bit longer as well this boy is Asta he still is, still is going to have the same name Asta but he's going to have snippets of Sephiroth's personality Ruth, being ruthless and all that. So yeah, when Asta was well brought to the church, where the father was, and again Sister Lily, I don't get why Sister Lily was there when. Asta, well, I get if Sister Lily was there when Asta was seven, not seven, around about some age, but the crush, whole crush thing doesn't work, doesn't spin for me. So yeah. Sister Lily was already there, so Austin doesn't have the massive crush. But Sister Lily has always sort of kept an eye on Oster for his weird and quirky ideas that he 
comes up with ever since he was little. She sort of notices that when she first met Oster, he already had a good coat of hair that was that was darkish grey, but all of a sudden it's grown a lot longer. Unode you know, pays attention, so do all the other orphans. And you know, pendant pendant gets kind of stolen. Basically, same thing happens in canon, all the way up until the Grimoire Tower part. And yeah, Asta goes to the tower with you know they have a rivalry as usual. Asta still wants to be the Wizard King. But he also has an ulterior motive, but he doesn't realise that it's Sephiroth. Sephiroth's motives of protecting people. He has not have any has not got any memories of Sephiroth yet. But when they go to the Grimoire Tower, you know. Once again, gives his four-leaf grimoire. And Oster, well. Oster stands there. He also has the Sephiroth attitude of not really basically giving a shit. So, he, sit, he stands there for a bit. Doesn't do the whole kneeling on the floor thing. And, yeah. No, he doesn't get a Renoir, everybody laughs. Master just walks. Says, yeah, fine, whatever. But then there was a thud. A pretty loud one, which everybody could hear. Then another. Then another. Then another. When out of nowhere, a Grimoire flies out of the wall. And it's the six, no, five leaf, no, six leaf clover, I think. God damn it, I hope I'm right. <laughs> and, yeah. When Oster grabs hold of the grimoire, it goes from a black and... Oh, pure brownish black to a greenish brown well to a light no to a darkish green with brown splodges no with very light splodges and all that sort of like an eyeball sort of like um cloud chauffeur's eyes when you see his eyes in um, Final Fantasy VII's movie that they made. Basically, he's got that. Basically, it's, it's basically that, but the clovers on that inside. And, and well, Oster, well, obviously grabs it. And as he does, as you most probably see now in the picture, a wing appears. A blue, a black and blue one. Which sort of catches everybody off guard, including Oster, who freaks out, understandably. Because, come on, if that suddenly happened to you after you got a grimoire, I think you would slightly freak out. And don't say in the comments that you won't, because I know people do. Shit like that just doesn't happen with while you're touching a book. So yeah. And not only that, Sephiroth, well, the hilt, a hilt of a blade, also appears out of the grimoire after it opens up. And Asta, well, being Asta, grabs it. 
pulls it. And out comes the longest sword anybody has ever seen. Giggity. Anyway, enough weird joke, all weird jokes aside, it's basically Sephiroth's sword. As Oster, well, leaves with it in his hand, but just does the Sephiroth thing and turns it backwards and walks out with it. Again, not really giving a shit afterwards. Because he's got something new to his body, a wing, and he doesn't know why. You know leaves with him. They do not. Well, you know doesn't get attacked by the chain mage. Asta does. And because he is the reincarnation of Sephiroth's good side, he still you don't you don't mess with Sephiroth. <laughs> you don't fucking mess with him, regardless. Asta basically just does the same thing in canon, but with Sephiroth's sword of cutting all the chains to ribbons. The chain mage doesn't really uh, doesn't really tangle him up in all of his chains. Because every time a chain gets close, Asta just tears it to shreds. And yeah. The guy literally just tries to book it and, you know, pretty much collapses shit with wind. With his wind magic. Now, Oster goes to the, well, goes back to the orphanage with you know. Now, the father and sister Lily see Yuno, congratulate him on having a four-leaf grimoire, but they also see Oster walk in with a five-leaf or a six-leaf grimoire. I can't rightly remember. It's been some time since I've done this shit. So, yeah. Oster walks in with his grimoire. Everybody's like really shocked to see that he has a grimoire, but also see a wing. A blue and black wing. Obviously they're all very worried and scared. The father asks if it's Oster and he says yes. Who else would look this goofy and walk in with a wing? This guy. The father also notices the very long sword and asks, what about the sword? Is that part of your grimoire? And Oster just says, pretty much, yeah, but I feel very comfortable with me holding it all the time. Don't ask me why. I just feel very comfortable. As Oster well, grabs his grimoire, as it has, as I said earlier, gr blue with light green with round swatches inside. As the father basically has a look at it, saying, That's one very weird grimoire. I've never really seen it before. It almost looks like an eyeball. Austin says, I know. I was kind of hoping you would tell me any more about it if you've ever seen it. But it appears you're just as clueless as me. So after a few hours of all four of them talking about it, Austin says, I'm just going to go to Demon Skull and test it out. Per se. I'm talking about the wing, not the sword. As Oster just walks off, again with the sword in his hand. 
backwards. Like Sephiroth usually has it in the game. And yeah, he gets the Demon Skull to see. Well, a very tall, muscular man with brown, with dark black hair, having a smoke with a bull symbol on his left arm. Well, with a cloak with the blue, black bull symbol. And we all know this is Yami. Captain Yami. As, well, Yami pulls out his katana and, well, cuts a boulder in half. Whilst the... Uh, is... surprisingly not scared. Almost like... He has seen somebody as tough as this before, but it was no biggie to him. Captain Yami notices him and says, So, are you gonna, just going to stand there or are you going to walk up and say hello? Being Yami's usual self. Or smoking and being a bit of a dick to everybody. As, Aust as he walks up, he notices that Asta, that there's a boy with very long hair, a long sword, long sword katana, and a well, what he can describe as a blue and black wing, a single blue and black wing. As he asks, "Who the hell are you?" As Osta says, my name's Osta. Well, he thinks he said, my name is Osta. But what he actually says is, my name is Sephiroth. As Yami says, Sephiroth. Hmm. Quite a quirky name. Which country are you actually from? That sounds like a land of a rising sun name. As Oster says, well, Oster, not realising that he's that he said Sephiroth, because it wasn't really him who said it. As he said, no, I'm an orphan. In a church not too far away from here. Came to the Demon Skull to have a few tests, test flights. As he well, basically points to the wing with his free hand. As Yami just nods, saying, oh, nice. Nice kid, but uh, what's, with, what's with the long hair and that sword? What kind of grimoire do you have? As Asta Belt grabs the grimoire, showing it to Yami. As even Yami's <laughs> baffled, like saying to himself, what the hell? Oh, great. Anyway, Yami well, says, fancy a bit of sparring? You and me, just have a bit of sparring. You can use the wing, it'll be a good exercise for you. Now, I know Yami would not usually do that, but he wants to see how good Asta is with that one wing. And be aware, Asta is actually not is actually fifteen as well. So, and he also looks like a teenager who's actually same height as Gina. Well, same height as you know. So yeah, Asta gets into a combat stance along with Yami, and those two have a bit of a spa, with Yami actually teaching Asta a thing or two about swordsmanship. 
and Oster actually using his wing for the first time to get used to it. And surprisingly enough, Yami well beats him by a hair, obviously, because Yami has a good sword arm and it has years of practice and experience while Oster do Oster does not. But in Yami's eyes, Oster could already be a goddamn swordsman. A goddamn swordsman master a swordsmaster with barely any little with barely any training. Oster was that good, but since he's new He's still trying to find his feet. So, yeah. Yami gives him a little smile. As he puts his katana back, saying, That was a good fight, Severoff. As he sort of reaches out a hand. Asta takes it, but then immediately pulls back his hand and touches his head. As a massive headache hits him. As his first, well, the first memory of Sephiroth comes back, saying, well, basically saying this, after all my years of experience, a good sword arm can only protect you so far. Having good tactics help you as well. I'm making this all up as I go along. But remember the name Sephiroth. Because I am the number one soldier from Fenris. As he hears another voice saying, Sephiroth, you may be the number one soldier, Sephiroth. As a, well, face appears with dark black hair. And with it being slightly spiked up. As both of them shake each other's hands as the flashback ends. With Oster on the floor reeling in pain because it hurts. With Yami saying, hey, calm down, kid. What's going on? As Yuno turns up saying... Asta, what happened? And Yami saying, Wait, you know, this kid's Asta. Is named Asta. He told me his name was Sephiroth. As you know, stops in his tracks and, well, scratches his head, saying, No, his name's Asta. Why the hell would he call, you, call himself Sephiroth? As he looks at the Black Ball badge, and he says, oh, you're a member of the Black Bulls. And Yami just says, yeah, I'm the captain of the Black Bulls. Of the Black Bulls. So, be a bit more respectful. As you know, just apologises, saying, I'm sorry, I never realised you were a captain. As he says, it's alright. But has this ever happened to him? To Oster, anyway. As... You know, he says, no, it's, it's never happened to him. He's always been a hard-working chap. And he's a damn good fighter. But he has a tendency to uh, lose himself in the moment. If you get what I mean. Yami agrees, saying, fair enough. Well, I'll be paying much interest in his, well, in his career as a magic knight. As Yami just says, got to go. Anyway, hope you like, leave a comment and subscribe.